Okay. So today, um, I used to probably involve Stephen at a much higher level in my business. And then we both just got too busy and, um, we just haven't done anything like this in a while, but I used to have him come into like meetings once or twice a year. Um, I think it's always good. And I think it's something that I encourage each one of you to do is to embrace your husband in your business. Um, anytime you're self-employed, um, or just in life in general, I think life can sometimes get in the way. And I think oftentimes we don't realize when we are saying yes to our real estate business so much of the time, it can make our family and our children seem like we're saying no to them a lot. Um, and, and I think, um, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff very transparently today. Um, but I think one of the lessons Stephen and I have learned either by failing or maybe learned by watching our parents either be successful or fail in their relationship is that we have to always openly communicate how one another are feeling um, and always make sure we're on the same page and working and growing together versus him just building an empire over here and me struggling and feeling defeated over here. Um, so I first kind of wanted, um, he called me before this and was like, what do I need to do? <laughs> and I said, and this is, you know, both of us are very strong personalities. And he said, um, well, you're probably going to do all the talking anyways. And if anybody truly knows us, like between the two of us, he talks way more. I'm way more to the point. I'm way more blunt. I'm on no. to saying this joker will talk to somebody for like two or three hours. And I'm like, I could have done 20 things by the time you were talking to them. So although we're very both strong um, personalities, we also are very different. Um, so I know not everybody knows probably our history, our background or anything to that nature. So I'm going to put my husband kind of on this spot and just kind of give a quick overview of just sort of like how life looked for you growing up, how life looked for me growing up and how we came from, you know, I came from people that worked the corporate world. You came from self, self-employed world and how we've kind of worked to merge. And you've really influenced me a lot in that capacity of being an entrepreneur versus corporate world girl. So what do you want me to speak? That make you shy. <laughs> no, what do you want me to do? You want me to like speak of my growing up? What do you What are you yeah. asking? Yeah, you're growing up, and then just <clears throat> you know, I can give a brief summary of my growing up, and then maybe just like the beginning of our relationship. How you know we haven't always had these. That's business. two different stories, everybody. The <sighs> beginning of our relationship. Okay, you give your version, and I'll give my version <laughs> of our relationship. Yeah, give your childhood first. Well, okay. So my dad and mom owned a little restaurant growing up. We did not have tons of money or anything like that. We had roof over our head food. Everything was fine. I just didn't like to see the struggle. And so, you know, from a young boy, I was entrepreneur selling candy in elementary school. And so, you know, it was one of them things where I just always, you know, my dad worked for himself and I always wanted to work with my dad. And so later in life, of course, I you know, always had that entrepreneurial spirit to want to do big things, but there was tons of struggles and failures along the way. And so I created several businesses from the time I was 18 years old, um, some good, some bad. But when Amber met me going to our relationship, I was in the nightclub business and did not want to be in a relationship. Um, I don't think it was that I didn't want to be in a relationship. I just had been in relationships and then I, I felt the need to be a certain way. And I just, I mean, she'll tell you, I told her for three years, probably like, I don't want to be dating anyone, but she would just always be there. I would actually tell her to leave me. And then 2009, this is a year after we met Amber or I met Amber. Um, we've been together 15 years now. There was some like detrimental shit happened in our relationship. And basically pushed us even further apart, but I think pulled us closer together at the same time. And so at that point, it was kind of like do or die professionally for me that, okay, you need to grow up. You're not some 22 year old kid anymore, blah, blah, blah. And <clears throat> by all this happening in my, not just relationship, but, but like my professional business, I'm like, I think it propelled me to the next level because when your back is against the wall, 
in anything in life. It could be having a child. It could be your marriage. It could be financials. Your house is in bankruptcy, let's just say, or foreclosure, I'm sorry. And you have no choice but make it or you're going to lose that house. I think until somebody has felt that, that stressed or that, that wavering feeling that like, oh shit, some, something bad is going to happen. They have not pushed themselves. I was telling a guy the other day, I said, you have to feel, you've got to become uncomfortable or feeling comfortable. What is it, Amber? What did I tell you? You got to get, you have to go through a season. Comfortable feeling so, uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have to become comfortable feeling uncomfortable. So I know this sounds crazy. You got to stay. I've seen it in, right. I've seen it in real estate. To me, I flourish when I'm like under major stress. I'm going to figure the shit out and I'm killing it in the business world. And then all of a sudden when I become content or become comfortable, I'll be like, damn, babe, what's going on? Like, like it, the, the mojo when your shit is firing and, and I'm just using real estate because a lot of people with Amber sells real estate. I'm like, you gotta, that's the time to push it because when momentum's happening, that's it. And that's in your relationship or anything, because there's always going to be good and bad times. Like there's never going to be a perfect time. Every time me and Amber, I shit you not, we're going for five days to Turks and Caicos five days. We get stuck at the fucking airport for what? two days. <laughs> Sorry. There's little on the kids. way home, mm -hmm. but it was like detrimental to us. And my point is every time that like the going gets good, I promise you're going to get hit with something and you have to counteract that or push past that. But go ahead. Tell your story of meeting me. We didn't really tell the story. Um, anyways, oh, I of how we met. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you can tell it. Okay. So he can critique it. That's why he's saying that. Um, so anyways, I grew up with parents that had me very, very young. They both worked um, for big corporations, no college education. Uh, just to give you a perspective, like when I graduated high school, my mom was only 35. They had three of us, you know, so we definitely saw struggle. Um, I probably saw it the most. My younger sisters probably saw my parents more when they were flourishing, but they saw it too. So when Stephen and I first met, you know, I was only used to working for other people. And I honestly didn't have like the confidence, mm. or the strength, or the know-how to like run and operate a business. But Stephen did, <clears throat> correct, to some degree, <laughs> you did. There were some things I'm like, um, I'm not pretty sure that's not how we're supposed to do it. But Well, you want me to tell them what I told you? Go ahead. So Amber was driving when I met her in 2008, my, I was everything in my life, I, huh? I was working for a builder at the time. She I was working in for general a builder. Yet. I don't know if everybody remembers this back then, but this is when the, the real estate basically crashed and gas went to four to $5 a gallon on average back then. And I'm in the nightclub business. I'm personal training. I have a tanning salon and a gym. Like I'm, we're working a ton of different jobs. 100 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. Amber is driving back and forth to Wake Forest six days a week. I calculate the gas. She's driving a Humber H3. I'm calculating the gas and the payments and the insurance. And she was not even making enough money to pay for the fuel. She was losing money driving to work because nothing was selling. She was basically like a draw plus commission, right? Yeah. And then, but nothing was selling. No. So she was so sitting this house. Draw. Yeah. She was sitting at this house all day long, not selling. And I literally told her, but I was like, you have got to quit that job. And I was like, come work for me. And I'll tell everybody, I was like, I can pay you $250 a week. And let me explain to everybody something. $250 for my little like tanning salon gym back then was a lot to pay. It couldn't afford it. And, but I told her, I said, listen, I want you to start personal training. Amber was really in the fitness. She knew her stuff. And I was like, you can start making money that way. And I was like, you know, Basically, I let her keep most of that money because normally it was like a commission split for the gym. And so we lived like that for probably a year and a half, Amber. Yeah, to like 2010. Yeah. yeah, 2010. So long story short, 
I told her to quit. She actually, I think, started making more, but she gave herself a pay raise because she didn't have to drive that hour-ish to work every day. And then at that point, she was like, I'm going to go to general brokerage. And I supported her. I was like, absolutely. I was like, because that way you can set your own schedule. And I knew from the drive she had and stuff like that, she just needed somebody to like empower her. I was like, you take every freaking phone call, um, phone duty oh, back dude. in. Yeah. Nobody wanted to do phone duty. And I even posted a video this morning and y'all can look at it after the fact on my social media. But I said, it's, I was telling a guy yesterday who was at my, my business. It's the little small things that make the big things. People miss totally miss out on the small things every day, doing the same thing every single day on a compound, uh, on a compounding effect years later, make the big thing. For instance, in my business, I don't have to advertise very much. My phone rings off the hook. Amber will tell you, I get phone calls throughout the day, throughout the night, whatever, from around the country on referral and the same people doing business with me year in and year out. And that's what makes the difference. And it's all the small things that I've done over 20 years. So if somebody ever says, oh, Steven's an overnight success, I'm like, you didn't know me 20 years ago because I'm far from an overnight success. But at the end of the day, it's those things. But go ahead, Amber. Um, so you've kind of gotten a background of our relationship did not start out fabulous. It probably was not really anything good till we got married seven years into our relationship. We've been together 15 years now. You know, but I think the thing was, is like we never gave up and like we worked through things together and we communicated and we learned how to forgive and just love each other how we are. Um, you know, so how do we keep a strong relationship essentially? Oh, I thought I put this thing on focus. Like, how do we keep a strong relationship in a busy life? And I think it's something that I see happen time and time again. Um, it's something Stephen and I talk about all the time. It's questions we get a lot too, of like, how do you both go so hard, but have a good relationship? And our relationship's not always perfect. Um, we have moments, but we definitely like work through it well. We we know and understand each other well enough to know when things are off. We know what to do to like bring us back together. But I think so many times we see it. I mean, we've seen it not just in the real estate world, but in the fitness world, it happens a lot. Um, you know, people start a relationship together and then one person becomes really successful and maybe the other person's back here. And we've had seasons like that too. We've had seasons where like see Steven's business soared, mine was stagnant and vice versa. I mean, it's the reality of life, but I think oftentimes when one person gets successful and if you don't keep that strong relationship, that's when you can invite a lot of evil in, um, so today I just wanted to go over like, what, what do we do on a consistent basis? Because obviously the habits that we have in our businesses trickle over to our relationship too. You know, that's the concept of atomic habits. You implement it in your life in one area and all of a sudden it starts showing up in other areas. You know, what, what are the things that we do on a consistent basis that keep us united, that keep us on the same page, that no matter how hard we're grinding, we, we grind together, we support one another, we have common goals that we're moving towards. Um, and, and to start it off, I think that is probably the biggest thing is you do need to sit down with your spouse and, and know like in the next 10 years, what do you want life to look like? And what are you guys working together towards? And, and this can be in any relationship, honestly, not just with your spouse, but even like on a team setting or with the company you work with or with <clears> your <throat> friends, like who are we and where are we going and why? And Stephen and I, I don't want to say we talk about it on a daily basis. We talk about it more when like we're out of town and we have time to really communicate. But, you know, we have goals that we want to hit over the next 10 years. And I oftentimes think like if we didn't have those conversations and Stephen was over there grinding and, and I didn't know why it could cause somebody to be very bitter. Right. You know, so so I think that the first thing that you need to make sure in any relationship, whether it's on a team, whether it's with your, your spouse is you guys need to make sure, you know, where you're going that way you're working towards it together. And that way at any point in time, if, if you do have to go through a season where you have to grind harder, the other person understands why, because I think when it comes down to it, it's lack of communication and clarity that, that can bridge a gap in between people 
no matter what relationship. Um, Stephen, what do you think are like some things that keep us mm -hmm. together or, or what are things that you need from me sometimes? Well, I think the first thing that people need to realize just in life, and you know this, I say this all the time, and I, and I had to learn it for myself as teenager into my early 20s, is gra this is in not just relationship, but this is in the business world. First of all, no job, woman, husband, whoever is perfect, and grass is not greener on the other side. So I feel like, it, it, Amber will tell you, I have at least one male a week come up to, to me at my gym with relationship problems. And these are not kids, by the way. We expect it from a 22-year-old that's had a different girlfriend every month. But these are 40, 50-year-old men that maybe they've been in a relationship for 20 years and something's not exactly right. And they think I got the magic something that to tell them. And I always tell them, first of all, it's the small things. And the grass is not greener on the other side. But like with Amber, um, like I love once in a while to go out and stuff like that. But I know with Amber and Amber does too, but I know it's like a give take. So Amber will always tell you, I'll be like, hey, I want to go do this and she'll be cool with it. But like now I don't want to do that every week or every other week. Like it's going to be give take. And I'm also going to do some stuff that Amber wants to do, whether I like to do it or not. And I'm going to support her. So, and she's never going to make me do something that like I hate doing. It's just something that I may not love. And, you know, I think doing that, or I'll tell you this, this is probably a year ago. Amber's Amber gets mad at me one night and she's like, I wish you'd put your shit in the dishwasher. <laughs> dishwasher. <laughs> and I'm like, uh... I'm like, okay, I didn't know you wanted me to. And I have a it hard time of communicating my wants. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but I was just like just something do, do so little. And it really pissed me off, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I was just like, are you kidding me? Because like all the outdoor stuff I do at my house, I don't ask Amber to do any of it. And I was just like, okay. And, and to be honest with you guys, I was just raised old school, like from the Greek world that like the woman done this, the male done this. And it was like, that's how it was for years. Modern society has changed. And, I, and I'm all for empowering women. And Amber will tell you that because I push her all the time. But my point is, I didn't realize so, that's something she wanted me to do. You huh? still like for me to be very like traditional at home though. Yes. But like something so little as like putting a plate or a cup in the dishwasher, I didn't realize it was a big deal. So Amber will tell you 90% of the time is if I'm not rushed, like this morning I was rushed. I'm going to, what I personally do, Amber leaves the house to take the kids to school before me. And I do 30 minutes of cardio every morning. And then, so I can make my own schedule. So I'm not like a super early bird with my first appointment. I normally will do my first appointment around 930 to 1030 in the morning, depending upon the client. So what I personally do before I leave, I will take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I take out the trash. I pick up the kitchen. I pick up the living room. And then I take our Dyson and I vacuum the whole little place for her. It don't take me hardly no time to do that. But I feel like if my wife walks back in the house with the kids later today before I get home, because I get home late, then she's like, oh, it's not ramshacked. Because with two little kids, anybody who knows it's got kids, it's going to completely, they're going to come in and have stuff all over the floor. And I just feel like it's a nice gesture for me to do. But it's something three years ago I didn't realize I needed to do. But now I do it because of what happened. Difference. And so yeah. I've just continued. Say what? I said it does make a difference. Like it is something yeah. that I'm really grateful for versus coming yeah. in. And uh, in, in some mornings, like I pick up, like I make the bed every morning. Yeah. I usually pick up the kitchen. There's just our last minute rush out the door chaos. Yeah. And then like, I'll tell everybody like Amber for 15 years, like sometimes I will get meals prepared for me, but like probably 90% of the time, Amber prepares me fresh meals. She'll make them like the night before. And it's easy. I'm not talking about like five, five star meals, chicken and rice or hamburger and rice or something simple. And to me, Amber will tell you that goes a long way because like, I'm very particular about what I eat or what I put in my body. And so five minutes, that's a big deal to me. In fact, I would rather have that than her go buy me any gift ever. 
Like that's just how I am. So my I point think- is, I think it is those small things sometimes. Like this was like a month ago. I had a guy in my gym, he's 50 some years old. And he was telling me how it aggravated him. His wife don't cook no more. And just, I have no idea who's even on this call. I have no idea who cooks, don't cook. But what he was saying was basically he does all the cooking. He picks up the food, he picks up this and that bothered him. And I think even if his wife don't cook, if she just took the initiative to help or she picked up the to-go food or whatever, that would go such a long way in his marriage. But what I told him, just so everybody knows, I said, have you conveyed this to your wife? And he was like, no, she don't listen. I said, but have you tried to talk to her in a nice gesture? Of course, he had to answer. If you've ever talked to somebody who has the answer before you even tell them the reply. So I was like, listen, obviously there's a communication problem. I was like, if there's something like me, Amber will tell you, me personally, I'm very you have I'm no filter. Gonna, you're going to tell me. Right. <laughs> I'm just going to blurt it out and we're not going to go to sleep if there's a problem. <laughs> and we, and just so everybody knows, within five minutes, I will hug her or whatever and everything will be fine. Uh, a- Amber's not like that. Like, she don't want me to touch her at that point if she's pissed off. <laughs> but I'm the opposite because it's the way I grew up. But I truly think in relationships, and if that's what this phone call is about, that communication is 100% the key to everything. I think in the not, business not, world, I think in- Not every huh? man wants Not every man wants their wife to cook for them, but I think you do have to know- No, and that's like, not what, what I'm saying. I'm what? just using that as an yeah. example. No, I know. You, you just have to figure out what each other wants. Like what, what makes you feel loved? And, and what do you need from me on a constant basis? And I've always told people like, no matter how successful I am, when I go home and I walk through the door, like I'm Steven's wife first and the kid's mom second. And, and that means I have to turn off like my ego per se, or whatever you want to call it. I have to turn off my businesswoman and go into like being a submissive wife and making sure that my husband's needs are met. Because I think sometimes at the end of the day, if if I know that my husband needs that, I have to be that. And, and that's part of like the give and take. And, you know, my personality, I grew up seeing women cook and, and my, I mean, my mom's still that way, Steven. And my mom's mm-hmm. the CEO of a company. I mean, she's still like loving, nurturing. What can we cook? What do you want? Like sh- that's how she shows her love. So to me, like, that's probably why Steven and I work because I saw that and I knew that's how my mom showed love. That's how her mom showed love. That's how my grandparents, great grandparents showed love. So for me, it was like a natural fit with Steven. Like, what can I cook for you? I love to cook. Um, but there are some nights I don't love to cook. And there's some nights I call Stephen and I'm like, can we please get to go? And many years ago, he was not that forgiving of to go, right? <laughs> You'd be like, well, I was just in the bodybuilding and I didn't want to eat rigid. if they buttered the chicken. But now a lot of times, and Amber will tell you on the weekend, I'm like, hey, babe, I don't want you to have to yeah, cook that meal. Absolutely. And sometimes she's like, no, 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 I want to cook good steaks or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I will go get the the food. I'll go get the steaks or whatever we're eating. But she, a lot of times I'm like, if it's been a long week or whatever, I'm like, babe, let's just get to go. And she's like, totally cool with that too. So I think that's because we're like open in communication. You sometimes know what I'm feeling without me saying it and vice versa. Right. hundred percent. I mean, it just goes to like, you have to be out of your little world and paying attention to what's around you. Um, we talked about common goals, essentially like showing each other's love, how you want to be shown love, give and take. I will say since we had children, um, we've had to be very purposeful in like date nights. And whenever we feel like we're disconnecting or at each other, it oftentimes means like we need to get away. Wouldn't you agree? Like, yeah, we, I, I still don't think we get away enough, but I, I was know gonna say, you it, need it more than I do, but <laughs> well, no, I don't mean that. I, I, yeah, but it's like, I, I know it's hard with two children, like, mm-hmm. and two young kids. And this is, a, and Amber will tell you, we love being with our children. They're just like a lot. And I'm sure anybody who has children on the phone, you get where I'm coming from. And it's like, when we're gone for three days, I miss my kids. I want them back. But it's like, sometimes I'm like last night, I'm like, my son hit me a hundred times in a row. Don't it's like he had 
adrenaline running through his veins at 9 30 at night and i'm like oh my god after a long day at work i'm gonna kill this kid he's but- in the little body though that's, been Steven. that's how i feel with <laughs> steven sometimes i'm like just please stop talking please and that's how steven was like does he ever stop no he doesn't no matter what you do yeah i mean it's it's definitely um i definitely think though that like like me and amber was like okay we're going to leave once a quarter, even if it was for the weekend. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't is the funny thing. But at the end of the day, we have been trying to like on Saturday night, for instance, even just do dinner for a couple hours, um, you know, and stuff like that. And I think it definitely helps. Yeah. It's just, just so like something to look for. And have like yeah, adult conversations and it's fun, you know, but so going back to like our relationship when it was a struggle, like we worked every weekend. Steven and I didn't have like date nights or weekends off till how many years into our relationship? Six, seven years into our relationship. Yeah. yeah. So it was like six or seven years into our relationship before we could even like say, we're going to go on a date Friday night or go on a date Saturday night. Like it didn't happen. So we lived very extreme for like seven years of literally get up, work all day. Friday, Saturday night, we would work till four in the morning, sleep most of the day Sunday, get up and go for a tuning. No, not, um, you're right, but like. Uh, oh, yeah, then we'd have to get up and go to a tuning salon on Sunday. I mean, when I and say then, 100 hours a week, we literally probably did. Then you're forgetting till 2000, uh, almost 15. Yeah, the restaurant. The restaurant on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah, that was right. It was really till we got married. So about seven, seven, eight years. Yeah. So we didn't really go on many dates or really hardly any vacations Mm-mm. until we got married. Um, and then we started to a little bit when we got married. Then we had quick kids shortly after. So it's not like we had a lot of time. So I, I literally say like our relationship has been more purposeful and focused on since we got married, to be honest with you. Before it was just like we were in survival mode, but that survival mode grew our businesses to Agreed. a very high level. Um, and then we had to like slow down and be like, okay, well, we have these amazing businesses, but we also need to focus on our relationship because Steven and I, at the end of the day, like if our relationship isn't good, we don't care about our business because it doesn't matter anymore. And then, you know, that was magnified 10 times when we had kids, um, you know, Steven went into like, I'm not successful enough. I'm not, he went into that. I think most guys go through that. Once you learn you're having a child, like, what do I need to do to continue to protect my family? Um, would I say that's correct? I just, um, felt that like, that, uh, okay, taking a motorcycle, what I used to do when I was <laughs> nineteen twenty, doing 180 mile an hour down the highway and not even thinking twice about it as a man, when the child gets involved, it's like, okay, now I have a wife, which she was my wife before, but it's like, now she, that's the mother of my child who I have to protect at all costs. And I have to set them up that Lord forbid something happens to me that they're, they have nothing to worry about. And that was just the mindset I had. I even, for me personally, from being a bodybuilder for so many years, I went into the mode of like, okay, my physical has to be in the best shape of its life. Meaning like, so I mean, Amber will tell you, I'm very, very particular about my food, about my vitamins, about everything, because I want to be as healthy as possible. Like I'm the most regimented person I know for giving blood, getting blood work, things like that, just to make sure I have pushed Amber to become the same way because I care about her. And that's where I think people miss the boat on. If a woman or man does not feel good about themselves, how can they make you feel good about you? So when I see a woman at my gym and maybe the husband don't come or vice versa, I always encourage them to bring the other one. And the reason being, you need to push it. Everything starts with the outside, first of all. And most people, for them to feel good on the inside, it starts with the outside. Like Amber will tell you, I thought she was the most beautiful woman in the world when she was nine months pregnant. And I I thought that was beautiful. She's having a child. I think all women are beautiful in that state, but I'm sure Amber didn't feel the best about herself with her being nine months pregnant. And so my point is, it's like a common communication to 
I, I just think because I'm in the fitness world that it's so important to take care physically. And then that goes back to is going to make mentally and prepare you in your business to all things are lining up. Because if like one thing don't line up, everything's going to be thrown off. It's almost like a builder building a house. If the framer it sh does shortcuts, the sheetrock's going to be way off. Like everything starts with, you know, home base. So I truly think that like, you know, all men and women should encourage each other for all aspects of life. Don't you agree? Yeah, totally. Um, my weakness is always doing things for other people and not myself. Correct. Uh, I've been <laughs> yelling at you for three weeks. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, I don't know why my mom is the same way. That's probably why, but that's not an excuse. So nonetheless, I will say like as much as Steven aggravates me with, with it, I do appreciate that. Like he does want me to be healthy. He wants me to be, you know, I think we all can go through life and, and not realize that even though we feel okay, we're not optimum. You know, so one thing I would encourage everybody to do male or female is like, go get your blood work done and look to see where you're out of whack. Are your vitamin levels out of whack? Are your hormones out of whack? Because you don't realize like those things affect everything. They affect how you feel. They affect how you sleep. They affect your mood. They affect your ability to like go out and do things in your business or even go out and do things in the world. Um, and I haven't felt bad, but I definitely have not. I mean, I don't know. I've had two kids back to back and then COVID and everything else. Like it's, I'm just now getting to the point. And then my dad, the last nine months to a year, the point to where like, okay, like you do have to worry about you because again, if you're not worried about you and you're not healthy, nothing else matters. And you can't love your husband like you need to, or you can't be there for your kids like you need to, or your business or anybody else that relies on you. So even though it may seem selfish or it may seem extreme, like you do have to make sure, you know, I'm going to be 41 next week. I'm not 20, but I'm still expecting my body to operate like I am 20. And it can, if everything's in alignment of, of where it needs to be, you know, so health is not just how you look on the outside. It's how you feel. It's how you function. It's how all of your body organs function. I mean, it affects everything. Um, the beautiful thing is that Steven's in that world, but I oftentimes think like, what if Steven wasn't in that world? Would I be doing these things? No, but I think it's something that needs to be talked about more because people come into our gym every single day. Do they not Steven? And they'll go get a physical and all of a sudden realize a guy at 30 years old has testosterone at 12. Yeah. Like, hundred percent. Women too. Be able, yeah, women too. Me, mine was the same way. And that just means like you are not going to be the best you could be. And I if tell you, everybody this, anybody, I don't care if you're 20, 40 or 60. I personally want to feel optimum. I've told this to my wife for years. So there is ways it used to be taboo to talk about this. In fact, if I would have gotten my medical license, I would be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire. Amber will tell you because everybody asks me There's advice on the say what? <laughs> There's still time. Well, I, I'm not I'm not going to get my doctorate. But my point is everybody wants to feel optimum. In my opinion, you want to feel as maybe like you're 25 again. Like you want to feel your body. Uh, you, you remember when you could party all night long and like not even feel it the next day, or you could go to the gym six days a week and you're not even, you, you keep going. Now I go to the gym six days a week. I'm sore as all get out. Like Amber will tell you every day I'm trying to train. I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so sore. So my point is though, without going to get checked, you have zero clue you know, what is going on? I mean, the biggest thing, most people are deficient on vitamin D3, um, K2, oh. vitamin B12. And these are They're all energy. things for, yeah, that that affects your energy levels, your cognitive function for your brain. For years, Amber has been, she has a very short-term memory. Um, and I have been telling her, I'm like, hey, babe, I'm like, I'm telling you. So most people, just so everybody knows, they think of testosterone in men for sex drive. And if a man has low testosterone, it's going to affect, he's going to be moody as hell. He's going to not have the energy to function. And most men 
are scared to talk about it because they're like, they feel like in fear. Like I'm not right. a man. I can't it's talk right. about this. Yeah. And so they'll come to somebody like myself to talk about it. And the first thing I say, have you been to the doctor? Like now there's a clinic on freaking every big city in the world, pretty much that you can walk in and get your blood work and they will give you whatever you need. And long story short, I just tell people to help them take advantage of the system. They're, they're, you're doing nothing wrong and you're just making your body optimum. So if, if you're deficient on vitamins, for instance, it does your body much worse to be deficient than to be high. And that's like the taboo part that people don't think because people used to associate like I'm taking drugs with taking certain things, but it can really well, propel testosterone's you. Testosterone like, can lead to heart disease. I mean, oh, not, your body not being optimum can affect a lot of your organs long term that you don't realize. And modern medicine, honestly, wants to give you a pill versus like tapping back into what your body already produces anyways and making sure it is producing those things at an optimum right. level. You know, right. so that's why it's, tab I mean, that's why it's still not spoken of that, that much either, you know? So just imagine like your relationship, your business couldn't possibly be everything it could be if you're not optimum, Hundred percent. you know? So that's another thing that we, Steven does it in a much higher level than I do. Um, but I am purposefully going to start making it just part of my life because I need to, um, nonetheless. Um, how, how would you say, this is kind of the last thing I wanted to, wanted to touch, um, and then we'll open it up for any questions if anybody has any, um, how do we embrace each other and what are, in our businesses? Cause obviously our businesses are very different and we do things besides sell gym equipment and sell houses. We have a gym as well. We have Airbnb properties. We build, renovate, we do lots of things, um, but how do we like always come back together and embrace one another and make sure that we, you feel a part of my real estate business and I feel a part of gym equipment. Well, I do a much better job of telling my wife everything that pretty much goes on in my business. I may not know a damn thing about what's going on in her business at times. And then I find out through someone else or I find out after the fact, she'll tell me something that she's never told me. But expect me to know. She doesn't always listen. No, no. She's just, but I do think there again, communication. And I think that like, I do involve my wife because it, she is my partner in life. So I want her to know what's going on, whether it be good or bad and get her advice. So it's like, it, it, and the same with, you know, if shit hits the fan in her business, she normally will ask me or tell me what's going on. And sometimes, sometimes she does not like my answer and, or she'll get mad at me or she'll tell me this, but I always tell her from the heart, my opinion. And I feel like at anybody, a lot of times people, when they're like me, I hurt their feelings because they know they need to hear it, but don't want to hear it. And at the end of the day, I'm not trying to be negative or anything like that. But I've told my wife, I, I bet y'all a hundred times something that was going to happen and then it happened. And I would be to tell my wife like, babe, I told you months ago. And it's like, I think sometimes we're so tunnel vision. Yeah, that it's we don't want to see it when you're not in it. Right. Right. And even myself, I've done, she's done the same thing. And I'm like, God, I, how did I not see that? And it's just like, you know, sometimes we have a pipe dream or something that like we're trying to fulfill or we're trying to believe that it's going to happen so so bad and sometimes it doesn't and we get our feelings hurt so at the end of the day i think that's where it is a big deal to have a significant other that tells you the truth you're not always gonna they're not always gonna tell you what you want to hear and I'll, I'll put i'll tell everybody this i would much rather my friend or anybody be straight up with me and tell me something there's a lot of people that if you ask about steven that They'll say Stephen straight up as they come. I, I've never owed nobody a dollar. I've never screwed nobody over. And but I also, if I don't want to do a deal or something like that, will be like, hey, I, I don't want to do it. And they may get mad at me, but I will tell them the reasons why. And it's nothing against them. It's just there's a reason why. And I don't play in something that I don't know much about. Amber will tell you I don't partner with people very much. I don't I, I don't like to be in a business that I don't know a lot about. I've entrusted in my wife in certain things because she's the expert. 
but I by no means tell her what to do. I'm like, hey, babe, just be careful with our money. And that's it. I don't even ask her about it because I trust her. But I also think going back, Amber, to like when you're doing business or like that's a big problem because it's like, oh, maybe the husband don't trust his wife with the business money or vice versa. And I think you, if you're married to somebody, especially you have to entrust them. There's a big, big problem. If you don't have trust in your significant other, like I, I, I just hell half the time with the, the paperwork and stuff, I don't even know what's going on. Not my forte. So I entrust in my wife if something, and I 100% like feel like she would never screw me. So if that was not the case, I mean, there's times I've like messed things up accidentally or not knowing, but, yeah, but at the end of the day, I always tell people that if somebody harms you or has bad intentions, it's going to come back on them tenfold. So you almost have to laugh and like move on because that person will get what's coming to them. And, you know, it's sad that people do that, but it, you know, if you're strong in your faith in marriage, I, I feel like that you have nothing to worry about. So. But I think um, if you go back to like when I first started getting successful, um, I think sometimes as in real estate or any any business in general, even yours, you know, we could go off and I could be showing houses all day long and you not have a clue where I'm at or who I'm with. And to me, that's just, I just naturally like dive into my work and just go and do things. I call Steven sometimes. Steven calls me every day. Do you not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> usually at lunchtime sometimes before or when he needs something but I also when I'm like going to a listing appointment that I don't know who it is which does not happen that often I will tell Stephen like hey I'm going to this house today I don't know these people it, that doesn't happen that often anymore because a lot of it's like hey it's this person's parents you know we know somebody that knows somebody um, but I think you know in the real estate world or you know, in the any world where you're exposed to the opposite sex, you have to communicate things with your husband because not communicating makes his mind go crazy. You mm -hmm. know, so I, I think that's, you know, in our world, something that, that all agents should do is just make sure that you always involve your husband in your business. He knows what you're doing. He knows what your goals are. You tell him when you've been successful and done a certain thing, um, because he needs to feel a part of it too. Because if you're just coming home and you, you know, it's easy, even Steven, Steven will come home sometimes he'll eat dinner and he'll be on the phone. Right. I've gotten much better, but yes, I mean, a lot of my business is West coast or overseas. So it's like our eight o'clocks, they're five o'clock. So there are 10 o'clocks. They're seven. They're just leaving their gym. They're calling me. They don't even realize sometimes where I'm based out of. But if so, I didn't yes. have an understanding or if I didn't know about your business or if we didn't have common goals, that's like an opportunity for me to be like, why are you on the phone when the kids are out here and they haven't seen you all day and I haven't seen you all day, you know, but do I ever do that? No, not usually. No. No. And just so everybody knows, we've had some very high level successful people. Like I'm talking super, super high level, m mega bucks businesses. And Amber has witnessed women do, like nagging the husband yeah. about whatever, yelling at them, talking to me on work. the phone. Yeah. And now they're no longer together. And because it's a very, very bad way to be because Amber will tell you, like if she done that to me, I would hang up that phone and cuss her out because <laughs> it's inappropriate. It's how we feed our family. But I do know there's give and take there. So a lot of times if it's a Sunday, for instance, I will shoot the person a text and say, I'm sorry, I'm at church or I'm with my family. Can we talk tomorrow during these hours? And the person will like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, so I've gotten better at trying to be more with in the moment with my kids, more in the moment with my wife, things like that. And then the sad part is because it's just how me and her are wired. Like when we was overseas, we're for five days straight, basically looking at real estate, talking about common goals and, and planning the future. Like, okay, we want to do X, Y, and Z over the next few years. How the hell are we going to do that? We don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. And when you're wired like that, I feel like we're on the same topic or the same page, 
that's what happens. It's like, you don't even mean to be talking about real estate or gym or whatever or your business is, but that's what you do. And, and that's where me and her, you know, get along. It's like, I tell people all the time, there's a ton of men that like I get invited out and it's the, the, uh, the boys. And that is not me. Amber will tell you, I went out a few months ago with good friends of mine who I grew up with and I had a good time, but that is not Steven. 99.9% .9 of the time, my wife's going to be with me and I prefer it that way. So we don't do a lot of hell. I don't know of any trips that we've done without one another. I mean, we, we besides like you leaving father or stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. But like we I do it together. And I, <clears throat> I'll say this before this ends. I always tell people this too, and you can relay it to whoever. I try to walk a straight line. I do not put myself in an environment that I feel like could possibly get me entrapped or uncomfortable or whatever. There is certain things I do. I don't have a secretary. I don't have things that are put in one. place. You need a secretary. Well, I'm a secretary. yeah, I probably need a secretary, but yes. my point is I don't put myself in a place that I could really misbehave. And I do that on purpose, not because I don't trust myself, just because that's how I want to feel. I feel like if you don't put yourself in a bad predicament, your your chances are limited for something bad happening. So it's that easy. I had an older man tell me that years ago, and it, he was 100%. Back in the club days, when I was going out all the time as a single male, I put myself in bad predicaments. And I got myself, I don't want to say in a lot of trouble, but with a, huh? Daily. Say what? I said, you put yourself daily? in bad predicaments daily. Yeah, you're right. But it's who I thought I needed to be 15 years ago or actually long, 20 years ago. But then I learned that I don't have to be that guy to be successful. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. Um, anybody have any questions? Feedback? Any struggles you are currently having in your relationship? Everybody's quiet today. What's your struggles, Amber? I'll. I'll... <laughs> what are my struggles? Um, this week, I don't know. I'm still like in my grieving period, and I'm in a different emotional state now. I was like crying every day. Now I have like anger. In me that's directed towards my husband most times. I don't know why. <laughs> but it's just, you know, he understands that I'm going, we don't talk about it a lot, but he understands like, I'm not myself right now. The past two nights I've went to sleep. <laughs> I don't speak to her. Because I felt like the past two nights, she just didn't want to talk to me. Yeah, I just needed space. But, you know, I mean, you and I both know so like, I what, what we need without saying it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. But I think everybody has struggles and that's what people it's OK to struggle. Yeah. The struggle. If you ever heard this saying, the struggle makes the man and that can be for a woman or a man. So without the struggle in life, I would personally not be who I am. And Amber damn sure wouldn't be who she was either, because there's things that happened in our life that was detrimental. She would not 100% be the real estate person she was without certain things that have happened in our lives. And that is a fact because people always tell me, I had a guy just recently <clears throat> tell me that he thought my wife had a horseshoe up her ass and he was almost being, it's a long story behind this particular guy. And I said, I said, there's no horseshoe. I was like, my wife lives it, breathes it morning to night works. And would do it for free. And when you're super passionate about something, I got into the gym business. I lost money on my gym for 10 years. People think my gym is flooded by younger people, older people. Now it honestly, Amber will tell you, it amazes me. I'm so thankful because I preached fit. I was so passionate and so hard headed. There was so many times over the past 15 years, I was like, I just need to shut the place down. And it's almost like, it was like a culmination. It's like, Oh shit. 
damn, super fitness is the spot to work out. And I'm like, where are these people coming from? No, hardly no advertisement. Like it took so long. And my point is, it was me being, even Amber will tell you. Well, tell them this. Even when we didn't have the money, I didn't have the money to buy new equipment. Tell them what I did. That's how super finished gym equipment started. We would go buy like. No, I know. But what I'm saying is. No, I'm saying I put the equipment in anyway in yeah. the gym. The gym was not paying its bills. I'm still no. putting stuff in. That is super hard to do, but I think that's when you're passionate about something. So let's take real estate, for example. When you walk in a room and you're, I had a guy yesterday, I'll put it this way, and he's a car sales guy. And it's a crazy story behind this guy. Amber will tell you, I meet some crazy people like around the world. He drove three and a half hours from Asheville. And we're talking, and, and this before I knew exactly who he was, he's a successful guy. I said, he said, man, he said, I can see a bullshitter. So I told him that I'm not trying to sell him. He asked me what he needed, and there was a handful of pieces he needed. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to sell you. And he said, man, I can read a bullshitter. And he said, I trust you 100%. Me and him had not talked for 15 minutes. Right. So people can feel your energy. If you walk into a house for a listing appointment or you're selling somebody, you need to own it. You need to be confident. You need to, if that's not the house for them, you need to tell them straight up, I would not buy this house. Like, don't do what's right for your pocket. Do what's right for them. It will pay you dividends tenfold. Amber will tell you, I've turned down hundred plus thousand dollar deals on, it was not the right move. It was not the right, no matter what my bank account looked like, we may have needed the money. I turned the deal down. Also, I'll tell you, and Amber will tell you this. If that client is going to be a bad client for you, and I'm using real estate as an example, don't do business with them. I've made Amber many times fire somebody. I'm like, you are not going to talk to my wife that way, or you are not going to deal with that bullshit. Never degrade yourself to make $5,000 or whatever, especially as a woman pisses me off when a man tries to run over a woman. I don't like that at all. So, but I think that's, you know, I'm, I can sometimes come home to you and say, this is what's going on. What do I do? And I feel a lot more empowered or I feel a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. Like when you do support me or say, you need to fire that person because you know, when you're frontline, you can be very much like, I'm just trying to help them. But it it can take and suck the energy out of you for all other aspects of your life. And, and when your husband looks at you and tells you, you need to fire them, like it feels good. Okay, I'm going to go fire them now, you know, versus like coming home and being like, I'm struggling and I still haven't sold anything for a month, you know? So I think that's where it comes back to like, you do have to communicate and tell your spouse, like what's going on in your business. Because I remember many times before I would come home and be in a funk and maybe I wouldn't tell you why. But, but then after I calmed down, I'd be like, this is what happened today. <laughs> you know, you can bring stuff home with you. And if you don't feel like you can talk to your spouse about it, it all of a sudden becomes something much bigger than what the real problem is. And the real problem isn't me and him. It's what happened today. And when I tell him, you know, he either comforts me or he empowers me and does what he needs to do to make me get up tomorrow and go after it again. But, you know, we're in a sales business where it can be very emotional and it can be like this. He, Steven, Steven will sometimes get drunk and he'll come home and, and, you know, I'll be like, start doing X, Y, and Z, like get into action. Don't sit there and be in a funk, you know, like get after it again. And he does the simple things he needs to do. And then his business go, goes again. But, you know, I know when he's feeling a certain type of way, I know why I'm feeling a certain type of way. And we totally know what we need to do to like move past it and go forward. And that's what we do. We're going to Charlotte tomorrow night to have fun. So hopefully, okay. yeah, hopefully what? Hopefully have fun. Hopefully it's a good time. Yeah, it'll be a good time. And yeah, we'll see. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. If nobody has any questions, we'll jump off. Steven needs to get to work. I know his little regimen. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.